Throughout our history, we have been highly destructive of other creatures. We have had an enormous impact on the world around us, and this has unfortunately led to the deaths of many species, whether we were purposefully exterminating them or accidentally causing their extinction. In this video, we count down five animals that humans have made extinct. The Haas Eagle of southern New Zealand was a large predatory bird that could reach sizes of 15 kilograms and wingspans of almost 3 meters. In the absence of mammalian predators, ancient New Zealand became a land ruled by birds, with these top predators hunting another species of bird, the large flightless moa. The moa were enormous creatures that measured about 3 meters tall, and this is considered to be the reason for the Haas Eagle to grow to such large sizes as well, since the moa were likely their main source of food. Haas eagles had relatively short wings compared to their body size, and this was an adaptation to the sorts of habitat they lived in. The short wings, coupled with where many fossils of this animal have been found, seems to indicate that these birds lived in forested areas, or near them, where they could look out for prey nearby before swooping down through the trees and slamming their bodies into the moa or another animal, causing a great deal of lethal damage. It is actually very possible that these eagles also hunted humans after they arrived on the island, a terrifying thought to consider a massive bird hunting you from the trees above. So how did such a formidable predator become extinct so quickly? Once the first Maori people arrived in New Zealand, they began drastically changing the landscape around them. This destruction of habitat made the birds very vulnerable, but this was not the only thing that led to the death of their species. Humans also hunted the huge moa to extinction, and the disappearance of one of their main sources of food, as well as the Maori probably hunting the eagles themselves, finally finished off the birds, the last ones dying out around the year 1400. The thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger as it is also called, was a carnivorous mammal that inhabited Tasmania and parts of Australia. This animal is very interesting, because although it looks very similar to wolves or foxes in overall body shape, it is actually a marsupial, more closely related to animals such as kangaroos and wallabies. The reason for its striking similarity with canids is due to the role that the thylacine played in its environment, as it was a predator and hunted in similar fashion to the dogs of the northern hemisphere, resulting in the convergent evolution of the rough body plan of a dog. Not a lot is really known about the behaviour of this animal, other than observations made from captive individuals. The lack of studies of thylacine behaviour may be partly due to the idea that scientists of the 19th and early 20th centuries had about this animal, that it was a primitive, unremarkable creature, a completely untrue preconception. Despite the lack of information on behaviour, we can presume it is very likely that the animal preyed on many of the native animals of Tasmania, including kangaroos, wallabies, bandicoots and wombats. Unfortunately for the thylacine, they also preyed on sheep once they were introduced to Tasmania in 1820. This was a major reason for why thylacines were wiped out. They had already disappeared from mainland Australia, possibly due to the introduction of dingoes, and because they fed on the sheep that had been introduced to Tasmania, they were blamed for many sheep attacks, resulting in a massive persecution of the species. The government actually paid people to hunt down and kill thylacines, and from 1888 to 1909, the government paid for over 2,000 dead individuals. The development of human settlements, in addition to competition with dogs on Tasmania, also contributed to the extinction of the animal, and by 1933 there was only one thylacine left. Later nicknamed Benjamin, these videos are the last recorded images of the thylacine. Benjamin died three years after these videos were taken, in 1936, apparently due to neglect. Although there have been many claimed sightings and searches for living thylacines in more recent years, nothing definite has ever been found, so it's almost certain that we have lost this species forever. The extinction of this animal is very interesting because, at one point in the 1800s, it was estimated that there are about 12.5 trillion individuals spanning an area greater than the size of California in one huge swarm. And yet, less than 30 years later, this species completely disappeared for unknown reasons. The locusts lived in the Rocky Mountains and in the prairie lands around them, feeding on prairie plants that would store up sugars in their stems whenever there was a drought. However, once the farmers of the early 19th century began expanding into their habitat, the Rocky Mountain locusts began to become a problem, as they started to feed on crops. Swarms of the creatures gradually grew over the years, culminating in Albert's swarm in 1875, when the estimated 12.5 trillion descended across the prairies. This was the largest concentration of animals to ever be estimated, and obviously caused a great deal of damage, costing approximately $200 million due to damaged crops between 1873 and 1877. 
So how did such a widespread species that numbered in the trillions suddenly die out in the space of 30 years? Well, no one really knows. It's possibly due to the actions of farmers on the Great Plains, whose ploughing and flooding of land may have disturbed the locust life cycle by killing the eggs in those areas which they inhabited during the years they were not swarming. But no one is really sure, and their life cycles were never properly studied by scientists, making it unlikely that we'll ever know for sure what wiped out such a numerous species. This mammal was thought for a long time to be a separate species to other horse relatives such as zebras, but more recently there have been some studies of this animal's genetic code that indicate it was in fact a subspecies of the plain zebra. It obviously looks quite different from other zebras due to only part of the animal being striped, with the back part of its body looking more like a horse. This animal lived in South Africa until 1878, when it was wiped out in its natural habitat. The quagga was hunted extensively by Dutch settlers in South Africa, since they were very easily located and killed, and their meat and hides could be put to use. In later years, the animals were hunted even more due to the belief that they were competing for food with domesticated animals such as goats and sheep. The combination of ruthless hunting and the subspecies' small range in Africa eventually led to the extinction of these creatures, with the last ever individual dying on the 12th of August 1883 in Amsterdam Zoo. At the time of her death, it was not realised that this quagga was the last of her kind, but after no more could be found in Africa, the quagga was officially declared extinct in 1900. However, there may actually still be hope for this subspecies. The quagga project, which began in 1987, is currently aiming to selectively breed a population of plain zebra to recreate the physical appearance of the quagga. The project also intends to reintroduce their new quaggas back into the former range of the animal, which will hopefully benefit both the animals and their habitat. The dodo is one animal that everyone has heard of. It's often used as a symbol of extinction, but also as a symbol of something outdated and stupid, as something that helplessly died off as it was easily captured and killed. However, this is now understood to not be a true perception of the dodo, which were in fact very well adapted to the habitat they lived in, and were thriving before they came into contact with humans. Dodos lived in a place called Mauritius, a small island just east of Madagascar. The animals that lived on this island were incredibly unique creatures due to how early on the island split away from the large African continent, giving evolution time to develop some very interesting body plans. This meant that Mauritius did not originally have any large ground predators, which allowed dodos to prosper in their forested environment, and caused the birds to develop flightlessness, since they had no need to flee from danger on the ground. Dodos became perfectly adapted to feeding on fruit and nuts on the ground, as they developed a very good sense of smell, enabling them to locate food. As well as this, they had very strong beaks and flexible upper jaws, which indicates that they probably consumed large, hard foods. However, although the dodo was well suited to this way of life, once humans arrived on Mauritius, they caused serious problems for the bird. Dodos did not fear the European explorers who came ashore onto Mauritius in the late 1500s, since they had no natural predators, making them easy targets for the hungry sailors who were also clearing out the forests that the dodos lived in. When humans arrived, they also brought cats, dogs and other animals that preyed upon the dodos as well. Since dodos laid their eggs in nests on the ground, the introduced animals had easy access to them, another factor that severely affected the species since they were not successfully reproducing often enough to recover from the hunting. It's hardly surprising then that not many years after the first contact with humans, dodos had completely disappeared. There's a bit of uncertainty about exactly when the last dodo died, but a reliable account from 1662 seems to have been an encounter with some of the very last individuals on a small islet around Mauritius. However, there is an even later claimed sighting of the animal from 1688, which means that dodos may have survived for a little longer. Dodos were actually not accepted as being extinct until the 1800s, and a large part of this failure to realise their disappearance was due to the concept of extinction being thought impossible due to the religious views of the time. In addition, many people and scientists of the time did not actually believe that the dodo had ever existed, and thought that it was a strange myth made up by the first sailors who encountered them. Of course, now this animal is one of the most widely recognised examples of extinction, and the destruction that humans are able to cause on other living things. Although this might seem like a depressing list, I would like you to think of it as a warning of what we as a species are capable of if we do not restrict our actions against the environment and the organisms that inhabit it. I want you to view this video as a message of hope, that we are able to change the ways of the past and create a sustainable way of life that does not involve the destruction of other species. 
We are not alone on this planet, and I hope we are able to learn from these mistakes of our past, and realise that we have a responsibility to protect the immense diversity of life that makes our world so incredibly unique. If you want to learn more about our incredible world and the wonderful life we share it with, please feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future videos.